Good morning everyone, welcome to Calkine TV, this is Sage and you are watching the Executive Corner Expert Talks and today with us we have a very special guest, Mr Jonathan Law, one of the directors at CSIRO and the International Energy Agency has estimated that transitional metals will be increasing in demand significantly over the next 10 years due to more green consciousness and a move away from the burning of fossil fuels. Australia is a major source of production for many critical, transitional and even scarce metals. In today's show, our special guest will discuss how the CSIRO aims to unlock the full economic potential of Australia's energy metals. And as you know, we bring you the industry leaders, successful business owners, all under the one roof to help you discover the insights of the stock markets. So today we're very lucky to have on the show Mr Jonathan Law, Director at CSIRO. Welcome Jonathan, thank you for joining us. Good morning Sage, uh, great to be with you. Thank you. Well, the critical energy metals is an exciting space to be delving deeper into. And many of the viewers being avid investors in the mining sector, I'm sure they are keen to hear your insights. Yeah, critical metals are really uh, top uh, priority at the moment because with the energy transition taking place around the world, we're finding that there's a range of metals that are particularly critical uh, to play into these new commodities and, and products. You know, things like uh, the technologies that generate energy uh, and the technologies that use energy. And so there's a demand for a suite of metals that traditionally haven't been on the agenda. Um, and Australia is very well positioned to supply many of these metals. But we're also uniquely positioned in that we have a wealth of renewable resources that we could capitalise on here in the country. And so bringing together our natural resources with our renewable energy potential is really an exciting opportunity for Australia. Absolutely. And the Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organisation, which we fondly know as CSIRO, is Australia's national science agency. Would you please discuss how the CSIRO works to solve the most significant challenges through the innovative science and technology? Sage, we like to think of, of ourselves as a scientific catalyst uh, in Australia. And what we try and do is partner with the right uh, organisations, be they uh, government organisations or industry partners or scientific collaborators around the world, and work on solutions for what are the major challenges facing Australia uh, and the world. So things like agriculture, uh, mineral resources, human well-being, climate change, uh, environmental sustainability, all of these issues that we're grappling with, how can we bring science to the table as an important player in those problems and then partner with the right people to unlock solutions that are practical both here in Australia and around the world? Exactly. It's about making these new technologies which are developing as the years go by more accessible and cheaper so that people can gain the most advantage from them. So you have recently released the Critical Energy Minerals Roadmap. In your opinion, how are Australia's minerals key to its renewable energy powerhouse potential? Well, I think uh, these critical metals are a really exciting opportunity for Australia. Um, one of the problems that Australia has had, you know, traditionally in the manufacturing sector, which is one of the focuses of our report, is that we have a very small population here and we're a long way from some of the major markets. And so manufacturing has often been quite difficult uh, to keep competitive uh, here in Australia. But now we find ourselves in a situation where we've actually got a wealth of natural resources in terms of some of these critical metals. But we also have, as I said before, the uh, wealth of renewable uh, energy that we could actually use here in Australia. So we have a local market, we have a local supply of metals, and if we can leverage off those two opportunities, we can start to build a global uh, footprint in manufacturing that uses those other two advantages. That sounds like an amazing plan and Australia definitely has the space enough to accommodate these sort of large scale enterprises. Would you briefly discuss how mining and manufacturing sectors can collaborate to turn critical mineral resources into renewable energy products please? Sure, Sage. Well, yeah, I think the first thing to remember about these critical metals is there's, uh, there's a large number of them and they're all critical for, for different reasons. So each of them have their own markets, their own supply constraints um, and their own availability uh, around the world. And so the challenge uh, in terms of the future is to link the mining uh, side of things with the downstream manufacturing and ultimately recycling opportunities. And so there's any number of different opportunities in those value chains that can be unlocked. And what our report seeks to do is to look at some of the major 
um, opportunities in terms of solar PV, wind concentrated solar thermal, batteries, hydrogen technologies, and electric vehicle motors. And look at the entire value chain and then identify where Australia is best placed uh, to play in those value chains and particularly how we can push Australia's participation down the value chain because as you know, uh, producing raw materials is a relatively low value add type uh, of operation whereas the further you go down with these critical metals, the more value you add and the further you can go into the manufacturing uh, sector, the more value you add as well. So there's a great opportunity for Australia to move away from supplying raw materials to the world to supplying a lot more sophisticated uh, mix of commodities into the world, whether they be more sophisticated chemicals that we can process here onshore, or whether they're actually parts of the products that will go into the global markets. That sounds like an opportunity for making hundreds of thousands of jobs for Australians. So according to you, how powerful is Australia's potential to derive value from its minerals that are needed to manufacture renewable energy technologies, please? Well, I think Australia's got an enormous opportunity and it's really up to us to unlock that opportunity. It's not something that will automatically fall into our lap. But when I think about the sort of global uh, competitors in this space, uh, Australia provides a really stable supply uh, of metals. Um, and we have a long tradition of innovation in the, in the metals domain as well. So I think the, the world is actually looking to Australia as a potential marketplace. But it's up to us to build the specific opportunities that will make that real uh, in terms of creating the opportunities for the future. But the opportunity is huge. Wow. Well, thank you so much for sharing your insights. And we're actually just about to wind wind up the interview. Um, what economic opportunities could be harnessed by investment in the new critical mineral deposits and technologies that reduce the cost and environmental footprint, in your opinion, please? There's any number of technologies that are going to reduce the, the footprint of mining. And I think, you know, one of the things that will make Australia competitive is our ability to produce uh, so-called green metals. You know, as you know, any uh, metal extraction comes with consequences in terms of its environmental impact, its water footprint, its energy footprint. And Australia is really well placed to become the green supplier of choice because we have uh, the, the knowledge base and we have the resources to produce green metals and we have the reputation to, to build on. So I think that's the huge opportunity for us to really position ourselves as a supplier of choice uh, around the world. And I believe that in the longer term, people will be prepared to pay for their premium product uh, as opposed to simply the, the straight commercial type dealing that, that operates in many of the, uh, the major energy markets, things like steel, uh, where the market drivers are very different. Yes, exactly. And this is a very exciting time to be speaking to you about the subject as Prime Minister Scott Morrison is visiting President Emmanuel Macron in Paris at the moment to discuss things associated with carbon emissions and Australia's part in lowering their carbon emissions as well. So was there any final comments you'd like to give our esteemed viewers before we close the show today, Jonathan? Thanks, Sage. Look, the, the only uh, thing I would add is that we're at the very beginning of a huge journey as we transition to renewable energies around the world. And the demand for these critical metals is only going to grow um, and it's going to grow exponentially. And so Australia is incredibly well positioned. We have many investment opportunities, uh, but they are challenging investment opportunities because the, the markets and the supply and demand trends are very complex for these metals. So I think people need to look very carefully at investment opportunities and think through their positioning in these supply chains that I mentioned to make sure that they're investing in robust opportunities. But the potential is very exciting. Um, and as I said, it's an ex exponential trend around the world and Australia is extremely well positioned to get on board right at the bottom of that curve. Yes, thank you so much again, Jonathan, for joining us this morning. Your insights have been extremely valuable. And viewers, an informed approach is the best way to work towards your goals of investing in the mining sector. And I'm sure the valuable insights shared by Jonathan this morning will aid in your further investigation into the space. And if you've just joined us, we just had a very interesting discussion with Mr. Jonathan Law, one of the directors at the CSIRO, discussing how the CSIRO will be helping to make the most out of Australia's well-positioned place in the critical metals energy space. And the full recorded interview will be available from the YouTube channel, Kalkine Media, in the next couple of days. And please stay watching as we have more 
live interviews coming up with experts as well as the Global Markets Roundup. And this is Sage signing off.